Ju just to start, uh, how many of you routinely do transperineal biopsy? Yeah, two Italian men and one, yeah, okay. And how many of you only sometimes do transperineal biopsy? Okay, just few. Uh, because the topic is not only transperineal biopsy, the topic is transperineal versus transrectal uh, access for prostate biopsy. Um, 20 years ago, if I spoke of uh, transperineal biopsy, not, bi nobody wants to discuss with me about that. Uh, transperineal biopsy was judged as uh, an invasive procedure than transrectal. Uh, most of urologists has, uh, have as a little confidence with the, with the uh, ultrasound. Uh, need of local anesthesia uh, <coughs> and transrectal uh, biopsy was a safe procedure, easy procedure without any complication. So 99% of the center use transrectal as an approach for prostate biopsy. But in Italy, at that time, probably 40% of the centers routinely did transperineal biopsy without any trouble. So there's some, some, uh, something to discuss. Um, I, I think we are in front of the same situation of PCNL, uh, prone or supine. In 1987, a man, a urologist in Spain, spoke about a new technique for PCNL, supine, but nobody listened to him. Only 10 years ago, the debate starts about prone or supine PCNL in terms of patient safety, not in terms of efficacy of the procedure, in terms of patient safety. And today, we know that uh, most centers switch to supine or better offer a personalized treatment in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of according to the risk factor for complication. But uh, John Minor, uh, uh, Kane said, uh, the difficulty lies not so much in developing new ideas as in escaping from old ones. This is very true. Habit is very difficult to cancel. Uh, coming back to transperineal versus transrectal, I really think that we need to put the patient at the center of care management. And we need, we need not only to, uh, to think about the urologist's perspective of, of this biopsy, but most important, the patient perspective based on control of the pain, accuracy, and uh, most of all, safety. If you, if you look at the literature, we perfectly know that uh, uh, most of urology uh, identify transperineal biopsy as the template process biopsy. But template is only one technique for transperineal biopsy. And in my opinion, why not template transperineal biopsy is the technique for routine biopsy? Because it, is, uh, it has higher complication rates, it needs general anesthesia, uh, the patient pass from outpatient to inpatient setting, and is, re is really cost effective in routine biopsy? I really don't know. So we prefer the Italian style, we prefer the Roman style, uh, with the patient in local anesthesia, freehand, trust-guided, transperineal biopsy. And we did a lot of work in, in the last 30 years with the evolution of the technique from two-hole technique to four-hole technique that we use today. And this is the scheme that we use actually. And if you look at the sagittal view, uh, you can see perfectly the direction of the needle that cover all the peripheral uh, zone or the anterior zone, uh, different than transrectal biopsy with a different direction of the needle that cover only in part the, the, the peripheral zone. 
Uh, this is a video that I show, showed last year, but uh, I want to move on because the, the is not the technique the point of this of this uh, uh, of this uh, lecture. Uh, only to know in, in, in terms of the need that uh, in our experience the most difficult part of the of uh, to to learn and, and and to teach this technique is to uh, allow the, the resident, the new urologist, uh, with with this technique to move perfectly parallel the, the needle and the probe. And this is important for, uh, for uh, how, how we see in, in, the, in, in, the in the next part of, the, of this lecture. So uh, accuracy, control pain, and safety. This is the three most important patient perspective. Uh, in terms of accuracy, there is no uh, very few randomized trial. Uh, there, is, there are some comparative perspective retrospective trial. Uh, we did a trial in 1999 in Charing Cross Hospital and Torvergada University on 500 prostate biopsy, and the detection rate was exactly the same. Both the technique are not. Uh, act so accurate to predict the final laterality of prostate cancer, but uh, the literature showed that uh, transperineal technique is much more accurate for the sampling of the anterior zone than the transrectal uh, technique. And this is uh, the result in my university, only to show that the evolution of the technique uh, determined the detection rate of uh, the nearly 50% uh, at, at the moment. And why not transrectal biopsy, in my opinion? Because it's less accurate sampling of the anterior zone, especially at the apical anterior area. And you can look the direction of the needle using transrectal and transpaneal, and you can see perfectly how it is absolutely impossible to uh, sample the apical anterior zone with transrectal technique. But most important for the high incidence of septic complication. This is the, the, the new issue. This is the issue that we, uh, we spoke about this of, uh, in, in, the last, in the last five years. And I want to focus our, uh, your attention on this uh, paper, on this brief report just released uh, in January 2017. This report comes from the Department of Epidemiology of the University of Michigan. Uh, studying the infection-related hospital admission after prostate biopsy in the United States. They analyze a large database and uh, they saw that the hospitalization rate uh, remained at the same level, about 33.5%, uh, but the infectious complication rate uh, uh, increase a lot in the, in the in the last in the last years, and what kind of infection? Uh, sepsis, urinary tract infections, prostatitis was the most common. But most interesting, most of these of the of these patients receive the prophylactic antibiotics that AUA recommend, ciprofloxacin and levofloxacin in about seventy percent of the cases. So the problem is not in, in which kind of antibiotic treatment we, we, we are doing. The problem is in the antimicrobial resistance that uh, is, is, is coming. That is probably the most important issue in healthcare in the, in the, the next uh, 20 years. Uh, antimicrobial resistance is a global phenomenon, is a natural phenomenon uh, accelerated by the use of, uh, of uh, antimicrobial medicines. And uh, we know perfectly that E. coli and Klebsiella are the most common, uh, most common uh, bacteria related with infections after prostate biopsy. And if you look at this data uh, from the global surveillance in 2014 from, uh, from the World Health Organization, you can see that five out of uh, Five out of six regions in, in the world uh, declare a resistance over 50% for uh, cephalosporine for E. coli and the same for uh, fluoroquinolone. So it's a great, great problem. And the risk of that is higher in patients infected with resistance strains. 
this is very, very important. It is a very, it probably is a, is a global uh, problem that needs a global solution. But I really think that everybody can do something to improve the situation. And uh, uh, I really, I really hope in the future that the scientific society will deny transrectal approach for posted biopsy. And not only scientific society, also the insurance will deny reimbursement for complication after using transrectal approach for posted biopsy. What about control of the pain? Is exactly the same. There is no, um, no great difference in terms of pain uh, during transperineal tra and transrectal biopsy. And what about training? This is one of the most important issue. You, you need training to start transperineal biopsy. Absolutely, I, I, I agree, I totally agree. You need to know the anatomy of the prostate in, during uh, uh, transrectal ultrasound. But now you need, you, you can use new tool to make this technique easier and accessible for everybody. New tool that uh, allow you to reach uh, very in, in very easy way all the area of the, of the, of the prostate, uh, keeping always parallel the needle and the, and the probe. And the initial experience with this uh, with the new tool is absolutely amazing. Uh, this is a, a, a very interesting initial report uh, just released uh, in in the literature uh, that uh, show us a very good detection rate with no infectious complication in patient that don't receive any antibiotics before the treatment, before the procedure. Just to finish my, my talk, you need to know that you can use transperineal approach also in fusion biopsy. Uh, we uh, published uh, in European Urology our experience together with the Cambridge University in, in uh, using transperineal approach in fusion biopsy using biopsy system. This is the scam that we uh, usually uh, use during fusion biopsy that is absolutely the same of the scheme, of the scheme that I use in the free hand in uh, free hand biopsy dividing the prostate in sector. And this is the result uh, published on European Rheology with a very good detection rate and a, a very good detection of significant, significant cancer. But the, the, the technologies go on and now we have a free hand transperineal system for fusion biopsy, and the most of the uh, of the of the industry are, are working uh, to develop a new software for freehand transperineal fusion biopsy. So, in conclusion, uh, trust guided transperineal biopsy is a feasible procedure with very low complication rate and detection rate comparable with transrectal approach. Infectious complications don't represent a problem with TB biopsy. We don't have any case of sepsis or prostatitis after transperineal biopsy. Local anesthesia free and technique has the advantage of transperineal biopsy without the disadvantage of using template. Training is absolutely essential to acquire the technique. And uh, I, I want to, uh, to uh, stimulate you to use the new transperineal access system to make transperineal easier and accessible to, for everybody. Thank you very much.